here we go again. Oh, no, not again. You've seen it before, haven't you? Dom, how long have we been doing this? Once more unto the bridge. Dear friends. Well, again and again and again until we're both dead. to connect to the mind. Kung Fu Panda 4 is the latest film in the Kung Fu Panda film franchise. It is co-directed by Mike Mitchell and Stephanie Ma Stein and features an all-star voice cast including of course Jack Black alongside Aquafina, Viola Davis, Dustin Hoffman, and many others. And in this movie we see Poe uh, in the position of having to uh, pass off the title of Dragon Warrior to his successor which he is reluctant to do. However, when a Threat rises up uh, from far away. He must team up with Jen, a, uh, a thieving fox, voiced by Aquafina, and they must uh, work together to stop this threat from the chameleon. Now, this review will contain spoilers of Kung Fu Panda 4. I'm going to do my spoiler-free thoughts first and foremost, but just so you know, there will be some spoilers later on this review. But first and foremost, let's get into some spoiler-free thoughts on... Kung Fu Panda 4, is it a good movie? Is it a good theatrical experience? Uh, is it uh, living up to the legacy of the previous three films? Um, I hadn't rewatched uh, the Kung Fu Panda movies in a while. I mean, I probably only seen the third one a couple of times uh, when, since it came out in theaters, but um, I rewatched all three prior to uh, seeing Kung Fu Panda 4, and I will say, there's definitely a, still a lot to like about uh, the Kung Fu Panda franchise. M uh, most notably, of course, is Jack Black as Poe, because he is the heart of this franchise, and he still brings that heart uh, and that A-game, really, to everything in this uh, franchise. And he's a lot of fun to see you get, uh, the various pandaness go uh, the things going on in there. You get to hear him say skadoosh uh, a bunch of times, and, you know, if you're, if you're a younger kid, you're going to enjoy a lot of uh, the silly antics that he gets up to with this. Uh, I will say, however, from a story standpoint, um, from the highs that we saw in the first two uh, Kung Fu Panda movies, I don't really think we've reached those heights. And even the third one, um, I mean, I, I'm a really big proponent of physical media, but uh, and I'm also a bit of a completionist, but I never got around to buying Kung Fu Panda 3 uh, on physical media. I found it on Netflix and rewatching it again. Uh, prior to this movie, I can honestly say there's uh, there's a reason why I didn't buy uh, the Kung Fu Panda 3, honestly. It's just, it's not bad, it's just kind of okay, it's fine, uh, I guess. It doesn't uh, it doesn't do nearly as much uh, with uh, the, you know, with the, the material that they have going into the third movie. And I think it, uh, the fourth movie repeats a lot of the mistakes uh, with the uh, with the characters. I think I, uh, may, uh, it's not a, the entire problem, but I think one of the main problems is with Kung Fu Panda 1 and 2, it was very much an ensemble piece. I mean, you got all the big voice talent, you know, like Angel Angel Lee's Tigress, Seth Rogen's Mantis, Lucy Liu's uh, Snake, David Cross's Crane, and a Jackie Chan as uh, Monkey, even though he doesn't get a whole ton of lines in the first movie. He got a little bit more in the second one. But I noticed in the third one, um, they, they, those roles and that ensembleness uh, got less and less uh, in the third one, and they tried to re replicate it with, uh, you know, Poe working together with the pan with the other pandas, and that kind of worked. It worked well enough, I think, but they they still had Tigress there as the role. Here in the fourth movie, however, um, they don't have any of that. You know, there's a there's a scene very mu in the very beginning that show that says, oh. You know, the Furious Five on here, here's what they're doing. You know, Tiger's Soft doing this, Mantis is doing that, Snake is doing that. And, you know, they they don't appear in the movie. They uh, And, you know, that thing is all you get. And in, in its place, you they're trying to replicate that with the um, the dynamic between Poe and Jen, played by Aquafina. She's this, uh, you know, street hustler thief, you know, the street rat kind of thing. And, you know, with the, uh, with the Heart of Gold and Poe, Poe is trying to 
to uh, you know teach her right from wrong thing. You know, don't steal. We're not you know we're heroes. We're not supposed to be doing that. And you know, there's there's some of that going on, but it's just it's just not the same. And, uh, for my for my money, that uh, dynamic it works well enough, and I think it's mostly on the Jack Black Poe side of things rather than Aquafina. And this is kind of my second uh, thing, why I don't necessarily think this works. And I've got nothing against Aquafina personally, but for whatever reason, um, she got typecast. She got semi typecast as um, uh, the last year or so. Uh, she played two different uh, animated characters that happen to be birds. One would be uh, Scuttle in the live action uh, remake of Little Mermaid, and the other, uh, I forget, I don't know the character's name, but she's in Migration, uh, another different bird movie from Illumination. And when I hear Aquafina's voice coming out of this fox design, I mean, her voice kind of has, uh, best way I can describe it, it has kind of a honk to it. And to me, I hear bird, you know, uh, and I don't necessarily connect it with a fox. And for whatever reason, that kind of put me off. A little bit, and that might just totally be me. And you're, yeah, uh, you might just call me crazy on that one, but that kind of put me off a little bit on that. Plus, uh, again, it might, uh, if you're younger kids, there's definitely a lot of things that uh, your younger kids will enjoy. You know, uh, if you've seen the trailers, the, the three little cute little bunnies who turn vicious and attack people. Um, there's uh, there's a fun little thing, and I would be shocked if it was. Uh, if it was in an accident, but there's a sly little blink and you miss it, uh, Monty Python and Holy Grail reference uh, with those characters, so definitely be on the lookout for those. Um, uh, that's that, that got a chuckle out of me, but you know, aside from uh, the uh, there's a, there's a character with a new one of the new characters. He gets a couple of scenes. Uh, it's a it's a pelican and a fish. Uh, and you know the, those two characters, they get they get the most chuckles out of me out of all of this. But really, I think what lets this movie down the most is the story. And I think it's more than just me, you know, being we're now sixteen years removed from the original movie when that came out. And you know, I was much younger then, and I really liked it now. But I can I like the uh, even you know me older now. I can still see a lot of the greatness in the first two movies. Uh, you know, even though that they came out, you know, over a decade ago now, almost two decades ago now. Uh, but this movie, this does, you know, the story, it is very predictable if you've seen any kind of animated, uh, really any movie in general, but really an animated movie, they hit a lot of the same tropes. Like, I was able to immediately guess what was going to happen with the character turns on this. And, you know, if you're a younger kid, you may not know this, and it might be your first yeah, uh, time seeing this kind of thing. But if you're an adult uh, going into this, you brought your kids to see it. I don't know how much uh, excitement you're going to get out of this. You're not going to, you know, see any interesting twists on it. Anything, you know, the kid, the big character change um, is also entirely predictable uh, as well. And it's it feels like you know, especially with Poe, it feels like we're kind of treading the same kind of ground. Um, and also. Uh, again, I'll, t I'll go into spoilers um, uh, after this, but the, in uh, story-wise, we seem to be repeating uh, plot-wise a lot of the same beats as well, which I was not expecting because one and two were, you know, they're very different kind of movies, and they don't really over uh, repeat a lot of the same kind of things. So, and that's what makes them so special, in my opinion. But this one. There's a lot of repeat on this, and I just kind of have to come to the conclusion, you know, the animation is still great, you know, the, the character design is still uh, still top-notch, in my opinion. Uh, the chameleon has got some fun uh, bits, she's voiced by uh, Viola Davis, and she, um, she is very much a very uh, an interesting villain. Not much, actually, not even an interesting villain. She, uh, they, uh, because they briefly, uh, do a little bit of work with her, uh, explain exploring motivations, but they could have done so much more with that role. And uh, in my opinion, I think this is uh, there's only so much Jack Black can do. In my opinion, to el uh, to keep this elevated, um, it's fun to see Jack Black. It's great to see yeah, Poe in action again. But ultimately, 
Um, I have to give this, you know, the, this Kung Fu Panda 4 left me with the same kind of feeling as Kung Fu Panda 3. It's above average, but not by much. It's it's not bad. It's it's, it's fine. So if I was going to give uh, Kung Fu Panda 4 a letter grade, I would say this is a B-. minus. Um, like I said, better than average, but not by a whole lot. So those are my spoiler-free thoughts on uh, Kung Fu Panda 4. Now let's get some spoiler talk as certain uh, plot developments and character arcs that may seem familiar to you and where you may have seen them before. Um, so this is actually very much a passing the torch kind of movie, which on the one hand is very understandable. Like I said, this, uh, the first movie came out 16 years ago now, and you know you didn't even bring back all the, the expensive voice talent aside from uh, Jack Black and Dustin Hoffman. Um, got, you know, Brian Cranston in there, uh, briefly, and, uh, for a little bit, and James Hong, I believe, but, you know, all the big, you know, uh, this is an aging franchise, they wanted to pass, the, they're trying very much to pass the torch to a new character to lead things into the future, and we've seen, you know, we've seen a lot of things like that, but what's more concerning is we've seen a lot of that kind of thing recently with these franchise, uh, franchises, and they haven't really worked very well. I mean, you can pull out examples such as, you know, uh, the last two Terminator movies or the last two Indiana Jones movies where they tried to do that. And uh, it, it just doesn't work. And that's really kind of a shame, honestly, because, I mean, you could have, you know, just add this, uh, add Jen to the roster and it would be a fun uh, fun for uh, fun movie for her to interact with everyone, not just Poe, but they didn't do that. So there's that. Um, also, there's uh, I didn't expect this, but it was kind of an interesting um, parallel. Uh, the scene in, in near the very beginning where you know they, they make the, the little pun of oh Poe's just catching rays, he's literally fighting a sting a giant stingray, and uh, it's because the stingray ate a couple of the bunny kids or whatever. I uh, made me think a lot of the similar scene in uh, Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves when, oh, I forget the, the character's name, but the the paladin or whatever, he uh, uh, he is uh, rescuing the animal child from the mouth of this other uh, giant fish or whatever. So two different movies within a year of each other, uh, having a very similar scene with you know a child getting rescued from sea monster interesting parallel there. Um, but uh, going back to the passing the torch kind of thing, um, at the heart of that is also a mentor, uh, mentor-mentee aspect, and the role of like, the reluctant mentee kind of thing, like the, the rapscallion kid who doesn't want to, you know, I don't want your help, I, I'm fine just the way I am, leave me alone, but you know, they're saying, no, you, you got to improve yourself, and here's why. Uh, you know, going back to DreamWorks thing, I made me think a lot of uh, Shrek 3, or Shrek the 3rd, uh, in a sense, you know, the relationship between Shrek and Arthur uh, is sort of similar to, you know, Poe and Jen uh, from that regard. So, I mean, there are other movies like that, but I thought uh, a DreamWorks example would be a uh, more pertinent parallel to be made there. But finally, uh, I want to bring up the, uh, the uh, this, this recycled plot of um, of the the villain's plan. The villain's plan is to get the uh, the staff of wisdom or whatever and open the door to the spirit realm so you can bring back all these kung fu masters and villains or whatever and steal their steal their moves essentially to uh, get her to be the ultimate fighter or whatever. And to me, it's like didn't we already? do this similarly in Kung Fu Panda 3. I mean, General Kai's plan was to, you know, steal the chi from all the Kung Fu masters of the spirit realm so he can come back to the real, the moral realm and rule the world. So it's like, it's bad when, you know, uh, you're repeating uh, your previous movie when the previous movie wasn't all that great, wasn't the best to begin with. So that was kind of odd, <laughs> but... Uh, maybe I'm the only one who saw that. Maybe uh, people saw it didn't care and they thought it was uh, it was a good time. Uh, and you know, finally, I'll just bring up the fact that there was a. I mean, for all the song choices to make for your credits uh, role, and you bring back the Furious Five, not the voices, just the character designs for this you know credits montage. 
you really, you know, weird cover of One More Time, uh, Britney Spears' One More Time? Uh, okay. I mean, I'm sure it's probably telling for all the parents who think that, you know, that to think back that that song is now almost 30 years old. But, uh, you know, as, as song choices go, that was kind of an odd one. I, you know, if you're going to pick a pox on, stick to, you know, what's wrong with Kung You could bring back Kung Fu fighting again. Uh, I mean, who would, who would mind? But, anyway, that's more of a personal nitpick of mine. But what did you think of Kung Fu Panda 4? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Uh, what about my analysis? Do you agree? Disagree? Did I miss anything? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate whatever audience I can get. Uh, be sure to look for my next movie review, which should schedule holds, I believe, will be for uh, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, which comes out in a couple weeks. Uh, also, I believe we're nearing the end of the Season 2 of uh, Halo, uh, and I'll be doing a season review of that. And uh, so look for those. And if you like this video or any other video on my channel, please give me a like, share, and especially subscribe. I would very much appreciate it. Again, thank you so much for watching. But just remember, there is nothing new under the sun. And yes, I have seen it before.